Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is a country of the United Kingdom located in the northeast of the island of Ireland. It has been variously described as a country, province, region, or part of the United Kingdom, amongst other terms. Northern Ireland shares a border to the south and west with the Republic of Ireland. In 2011, its population was 1,810,863, constituting about 30% of the island's total population and about 3% of the UK's population. Established by the Northern Ireland Act 1998 as part of the Good Friday Agreement, the Northern Ireland Assembly holds responsibility for a range of devolved policy matters, while other areas are reserved for the British government. Northern Ireland cooperates with the Republic of Ireland in some areas, and the agreement granted the Republic the ability to put forward views and proposals with determined efforts to resolve disagreements between the two governments. Northern Ireland was created in 1921, when Ireland was partitioned between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, by an act of the British Parliament. Unlike Southern Ireland, which would become the Irish Free State in 1922, the majority of Northern Ireland's population were Unionists, who wanted to remain within the United Kingdom. Most of these were the Protestant descendants of colonists, from Great Britain. However, a significant minority, mostly Catholics, were nationalists who wanted a united Ireland independent of British rule. Today, the former generally see themselves as British and the latter generally see themselves as Irish. While a distinct Northern Irish or Ulster identity is claimed both by a large minority of Catholics and Protestants and by many of those who are non-aligned. For most of the 20th century, when it came into existence, Northern Ireland was marked by discrimination and hostility between these two sides in what First Minister of Northern Ireland David Trimble called a cold house for Catholics. In the late 1960s, conflict between state forces and chiefly Protestant Unionists on the one hand, and chiefly Catholic Nationalists on the other erupted into three decades of violence known as the Troubles, which claimed over 3,500 lives and caused over 50,000 casualties. The 1998 Good Friday Agreement was a major step in the peace process, including the decommissioning of weapons, although sectarianism and religious segregation still remain major social problems, and sporadic violence has continued. Northern Ireland has historically been the most industrialized region of Ireland. After declining as a result of the political and social turmoil of the Troubles, its economy has grown significantly since the late 1990s. The initial growth came from the peace dividend and the links and increased trade with the Republic of Ireland, continuing with a significant increase in tourism, investment and business from around the world. Unemployment in Northern Ireland peaked at 17.2% in 1986, dropping to 6.1% and down by 1.2 percentage points over the year, similar to the UK figure of 6.2%. 58.2% of those unemployed had been unemployed for over a year. Prominent artists and sportspersons from Northern Ireland include Van Morrison, Rory McIlroy, Joey Dunlop, Wayne McCullough and George Best. Some people from Northern Ireland prefer to identify as Irish while others prefer to identify as British. Cultural links between Northern Ireland, the rest of Ireland, and the rest of the UK are complex with Northern Ireland sharing both the culture of Ireland and the culture of the United Kingdom. In many sports, the island of Ireland fields a single team, a notable exception being association football. Northern Ireland competes separately 
at the Commonwealth Games, and people from Northern Ireland may compete for either Great Britain or Ireland at the Olympic Games. History the region that is now Northern Ireland was the bedrock of the Irish War of Resistance against English programs of colonialism in the late 16th century. The English-controlled Kingdom of Ireland had been declared by the English King Henry VIII in 1542, but Irish resistance made English control fragmentary. Following Irish defeat at the Battle of Kinsale, though, the region's Gaelic Roman Catholic aristocracy fled to continental Europe in 1607 and the region became subject to major programs of colonialism by Protestant English and Scottish settlers. A rebellion in 1641 by Irish aristocrats against English rule resulted in a massacre of settlers in Ulster in the context of a war breaking out between England, Scotland and Ireland fueled by religious intolerance in government, victories by English forces in that war, and further Protestant victories in the Williamite War in Ireland toward the close of the 17th century solidified Anglican rule in Ireland. In Northern Ireland, the victories of the Siege of Derry and the Battle of the Boyne in this latter war are still celebrated by some Protestants. Following the victory of 1691, and contrary to the terms of the Treaty of Limerick, after the Pope who had been allied to William of Orange recognised James II as continuing King of Great Britain and Ireland in place of William, a series of penal laws was passed by the Anglican ruling class in Ireland. Their intention was to materially disadvantage the Catholic community and, to a lesser extent, the Presbyterian community, in the context of open institutional discrimination. The 18th century saw secret, militant societies develop in communities in the region and act on sectarian tensions in violent attacks. These events escalated at the end of the century following an event known as the Battle of the Diamond which saw the supremacy of the Anglican and Presbyterian Peepo Day Boys over the Catholic defenders and leading to the formation of the Anglican Orange Order. A rebellion in 1798 led by the cross-community Belfast-based Society of the United Irishmen and inspired by the French Revolution sought to break the constitutional ties between Ireland and Britain and unite Irish people of all religions. Following this, in an attempt to quell sectarianism and force the removal of discriminatory laws, the government of the Kingdom of Great Britain pushed for the two kingdoms to be merged. The new state, formed in 1801, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, was governed from a single government and parliament based in London. Between 1717 and 1775 some 250,000 people from Ulster emigrated to the British North American colonies. It is estimated that there are more than 27 million Scotch-Irish Americans now living in the U.S. Partition of Ireland during the 19th century, legal reforms started in the late 18th century continued to remove statutory discrimination against Catholics, and progressive programs enabled tenant farmers to buy land from landlords. By the close of the century, autonomy for Ireland within the United Kingdom, known as Home Rule, was regarded as highly likely. In 1912, after decades of obstruction from the House of Lords, Home Rule became a near certainty. A clash between the House of Commons and House of Lords over a controversial budget produced the Parliament Act 1911, which enabled the veto of the Lords to be overturned. The House of Lords' veto had been the Unionists' main guarantee that Home Rule would not be enacted, because the majority of members of the House of Lords were Unionists. In response, 
opponents to home rule, from conservative and unionist party leaders such as Bona Law and Dublin-based barrister Sir Edward Carson to militant working-class unionists in Ireland, threatened the use of violence. In 1914, they smuggled thousands of rifles and rounds of ammunition from Imperial Germany for use by the Ulster Volunteers, a paramilitary organization opposed to the implementation of home rule. Unionists were in a minority in Ireland as a whole, but in the northern province of Ulster they were a very large majority in County Antrim and County Down, small majorities in County Armagh and County Londonderry and a substantial minority in the rest of the province. These four counties, as well as County Fermanagh and County Tyrone, would later constitute Northern Ireland. Most of the remaining 26 counties which later became the Republic of Ireland were overwhelmingly majority nationalist. During the Home Rule Crisis the possibility was discussed of a temporary partition of these six counties from the rest of Ireland. In 1914, the Third Home Rule Bill received royal assent as the Government of Ireland Act 1914. However, its implementation was suspended before it came into effect, because of the outbreak of the First World War, and the amending bill to partition Ireland was abandoned. The war was expected to last only a few weeks but in fact lasted four years. By the end of the war, the act was seen as unimplementable. Public opinion among nationalists had shifted during the war from a demand for home rule to one for full independence. In 1919, David Lloyd George proposed a new bill be established by the Cabinet's Walter Long Committee on Ireland, which by adopting findings of his inconclusive 1917-18 Irish Convention would divide Ireland into two home rule areas, 26 counties being ruled from Dublin and six being ruled from Belfast. Straddling these two areas would be a shared Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, who would appoint both governments and a Council of Ireland, which Lloyd George believed would evolve into an all-Ireland Parliament. Events overtook the government. In the general election of 1918, the pro-independence Sinn Féin won 73 of the 105 parliamentary seats in Ireland, and unilaterally established the first ale, an extrajudicial parliament in Ireland. Ireland was partitioned between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland in 1921 under the terms of Lloyd George Government of Ireland Act 1920. During the Anglo-Irish War between Irish Republican and British forces, the war ended on 6 December 1921, with the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty, which created the Irish Free State, under the terms of the treaty. Northern Ireland would become part of the Free State unless the government opted out by presenting an address to the King, although in practice partition remained in place. Northern Ireland As expected, the Houses of the Parliament of Northern Ireland resolved on 7 December 1922 to exercise its right to opt out of the Free State by making an address to the King. The text of the address was, shortly afterwards, the Boundary Commission was established to decide on the territorial boundaries between the Irish Free State and Northern Ireland. Owing to the outbreak of civil war in the Free State, the work of the Commission was delayed until 1925. Leaders in Dublin expected a substantial reduction in the territory of Northern Ireland, with nationalist areas moving to the Free State. However, the Commission's report recommended only that some small portions of land should be ceded from Northern Ireland to the Free State and even that a small amount of land should be ceded from the Free State to Northern Ireland. To prevent argument, this report was suppressed and in exchange for a waiver to the Free State's obligations to the UK's public debt. 
and the dissolution of the Council of Ireland, the initial six-county border was maintained with no changes. In June 1940, to encourage the neutral Irish state to join with the Allies, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill indicated to the Taoiseach Eamon de Valera that the United Kingdom would push for Irish unity. But believing that Churchill could not deliver, de Valera declined the offer. The British did not inform the government of Northern Ireland that they had made the offer to the Dublin government, and de Valera's rejection was not publicised until 1970. The Ireland Act 1949 gave the first legal guarantee that the region would not cease to be part of the United Kingdom without the consent of the Parliament of Northern Ireland. The Troubles The Troubles, which started in the late 1960s, consisted of about 30 years of recurring acts of intense violence, during which 3,254 people were killed with over 50,000 casualties. From 1969 to 2003 there were over 36,900 shooting incidents and over 16,200 bombings or attempted bombings associated with the Troubles. The conflict was caused by the disputed status of Northern Ireland within the United Kingdom, and the discrimination against the Irish nationalist minority by the dominant Unionist majority. From 1967 to 1972 the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association, which modelled itself on the US civil rights movement, led a campaign of civil resistance to anti-Catholic discrimination in housing, employment, policing, and electoral procedures. The franchise for local government elections included only ratepayers and their spouses, and so excluded over a quarter of the electorate, while the majority of disenfranchised electors were Protestant. But Catholics were overrepresented since they were poorer, and had more adults still living in the family home. NICRA's campaign, seen by many Unionists as an Irish Republican front, and the violent reaction to it, proved to be a precursor to a more violent period. As early as 1969, armed campaigns of paramilitary groups began, including the Provisional IRA campaign of 1969-1997 which was aimed at the end of British rule in Northern Ireland and the creation of a united Ireland, and the Ulster Volunteer Force, formed in 1966 in response to the perceived erosion of both the British character and Unionist domination of Northern Ireland. The state security forces, the British Army, and the police were also involved in the violence. The British government's position is that its forces were neutral in the conflict, trying to uphold law and order in Northern Ireland and the right of the people of Northern Ireland to democratic self-determination. Republicans regarded the state forces as combatants in the conflict, pointing to the collusion between the state forces and the loyalist paramilitaries as proof of this. The ballast investigation by the police ombudsman has confirmed that British forces, and in particular the RUC, did collude with loyalist paramilitaries, were involved in murder, and did obstruct the course of justice when such claims had been investigated, although the extent to which such collusion occurred is still hotly disputed. As a consequence of the worsening security situation, autonomous regional government for Northern Ireland was suspended in 1972. Alongside the violence, there was a political deadlock between the major political parties in Northern Ireland, including those who condemned violence over the future status of Northern Ireland and the form of government there should be within Northern Ireland. In 1973, Northern Ireland held a referendum to determine if it should remain in the United Kingdom or be part of a united Ireland. The vote went heavily in favour of maintaining the status quo, 
Approximately 57.5% of the total electorate voted in support. But only 1% of Catholics voted following a boycott organized by the Social Democratic and Labour Party. Peace process The troubles were brought to an uneasy end by a peace process which included the declaration of ceasefires by most paramilitary organizations and the complete decommissioning of the weapons, the reform of the police, and the corresponding withdrawal of army troops from the streets and from sensitive border areas such as South Armagh and Fermanagh, as agreed by the signatories to the Belfast Agreement. This reiterated the long-held British position which had never before been fully acknowledged by successive Irish governments, that Northern Ireland will remain within the United Kingdom until a majority of voters in Northern Ireland decides otherwise. The Constitution of Ireland was amended in 1999 to remove a claim of the Irish nation to sovereignty over the whole of Ireland a claim qualified by an acknowledgement that Ireland could only exercise legal control over the territory formerly known as the Irish Free State. The new Articles 2 and 3 added to the Constitution to replace the earlier Articles implicitly acknowledged that the status of Northern Ireland and its relationships within the rest of the United Kingdom and with the Republic of Ireland would only be changed with the agreement of a majority of voters in each jurisdiction. This aspect was also central to the Belfast Agreement which was signed in 1998 and ratified by referendums held simultaneously in both Northern Ireland and the Republic. At the same time, the British government recognized for the first time as part of the perspective the so-called Irish dimension, the principle that the people of the island of Ireland as a whole have the right, without any outside interference, to solve the issues between North and South by mutual consent. The latter statement was key to winning support for the agreement from nationalists. It established a devolved power-sharing government within Northern Ireland which must consist of both unionist and nationalist parties. These institutions were suspended by the British government in 2002 after police service of Northern Ireland allegations of spying by people working for Sinn Féin Acutien at the Assembly. The resulting case against the accused Sinn Féin Acutien member collapsed on 28 July 2005. The Provisional IRA declared an end to its campaign and has since decommissioned what is thought to be all of its arsenal. This final act of decommissioning was performed in accordance with the Belfast Agreement of 1998 and under the watch of the Independent International Commission on Decommissioning and two external church witnesses. Many Unionists, however, remain skeptical. The International Commission later confirmed that the main loyalist paramilitary groups, the UDA, UVF and the Red Hand Commando, had decommissioned what is thought to be all of their arsenals, witnessed by a former archbishop and a former top civil servant, politicians elected, to the Assembly. At the 2003 Assembly election were called together on 15 May 2006 under the Northern Ireland Act. 2006 for the purpose of electing a First Minister and Deputy First Minister of Northern Ireland, and choosing the members of an executive as a preliminary step to the restoration of devolved government. Following the election held on 7 March 2007, devolved government returned on 8 May 2007 with Democratic Unionist Party leader Ian Paisley, and Sinn Féin Deputy Leader Martin McGuinness taking office as First Minister and Deputy First Minister, respectively. In its white paper on Brexit, the United Kingdom government reiterated its commitment to the Belfast Agreement with regard to Northern Ireland's status. It said that the UK government's clearly stated preferences 
to retain Northern Ireland's current constitutional position as a part of the UK, but with strong links to Ireland. Background The main political divide in Northern Ireland is between Unionists, who wish to see Northern Ireland continue as part of the United Kingdom, and Nationalists, who wish to see Northern Ireland unified with the Republic of Ireland, independent from the United Kingdom. These two opposing views are linked to deeper cultural divisions. Unionists are predominantly Ulster Protestant, descendants of mainly Scottish, English, and Huguenot settlers as well as Gaels who converted to one of the Protestant denominations. Nationalists are overwhelmingly Catholic and descend from the population predating the settlement, with a minority from the Scottish Highlands as well as some converts from Protestantism. Discrimination against nationalists under the Stormont government gave rise to the civil rights movement in the 1960s. While some unionists argue that discrimination was not just due to religious or political bigotry, but also the result of more complex socio-economic, socio-political, and geographical factors, its existence, and the manner in which nationalist anger at it was handled, were a major contributing factor to the troubles. The political unrest went through its most violent phase between 1968 and 1994. In 2007, 36% of the population defined themselves as Unionist, 24% as Nationalist, and 40% defined themselves as neither. According to a 2015 opinion poll, 70% express a long-term preference of the maintenance of Northern Ireland's membership of the United Kingdom, while 14% express a preference for membership of a United Ireland. This discrepancy can be explained by the overwhelming preference among Protestants to remain a part of the UK, while Catholic preferences are spread across a number of solutions to the constitutional question including remaining a part of the UK, a united Ireland, Northern Ireland becoming an independent state, and those who don't know official voting figures, which reflect views on the national question, along with issues of candidate, geography, personal loyalty and historic voting patterns, show 54% of Northern Ireland voters vote for unionist parties, 42% vote for nationalist parties, and 4% vote other. Opinion polls consistently show that the election results are not necessarily an indication of the electorate stance regarding the constitutional status of Northern Ireland. Most of the population of Northern Ireland are at least nominally Christian, mostly Roman Catholic, and Protestant denominations. Many voters are attracted to Unionism's conservative policies while other voters are instead attracted to the traditionally leftist Sinn Féin, QTIN and SDLP, and the respective party platforms for democratic socialism and social democracy. For the most part, Protestants feel a strong connection with Great Britain and wish for Northern Ireland to remain part of the United Kingdom. Many Catholics, however, generally aspire to a united Ireland or are less certain about how to solve the constitutional question. In the 2015 survey by Northern Ireland Life and Times, 47% of Northern Irish Catholics supported Northern Ireland remaining a part of the United Kingdom, either by direct rule or devolved government. Protestants have a slight majority in Northern Ireland, according to the latest Northern Ireland census. The makeup of the Northern Ireland Assembly reflects the appeals of the various parties within the population. Of the 108 MLAs, 56 are Unionists and 40 are Nationalists. Governance since 1998, Northern Ireland has had devolved government within the United Kingdom. 
The UK government and UK Parliament are responsible for reserved and accepted matters. Reserved matters comprise listed policy areas that Parliament may devolve to Northern Ireland Assembly at some time in the future. Accepted matters are never expected to be considered for devolution on all other governmental matters. The Northern Ireland Executive together with the 108-member Northern Ireland Assembly may legislate for and govern Northern Ireland. Devolution in Northern Ireland is dependent upon participation by members of the Northern Ireland Executive in the North South Ministerial Council, which coordinates areas of cooperation between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Additionally, in recognition of the Irish government's special interest in Northern Ireland, the Government of Ireland and Government of the United Kingdom cooperate closely on non-devolved matters through the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference. Elections to the Northern Ireland Assembly are by single transferable vote with six representatives elected from 18 parliamentary constituencies. 18 representatives to the lower house of the UK Parliament are elected from the same constituencies using the first-past-the-post system. However, not all of these take their seats. Shinefi Akutian MPs, currently five, refuse to take the oath to serve the Queen that is required before MPs are allowed to take their seats. In addition, the upper house of the UK Parliament, the House of Lords, currently has some 25 appointed members. From Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland itself forms a single constituency for elections to the European Parliament. The Northern Ireland Office represents the UK government in Northern Ireland on reserved matters and represents Northern Ireland's interests within the UK government. Additionally, the Republic's government also has the right to put forward views and proposals on non-devolved matters in relation to Northern Ireland. The Northern Ireland Office is led by the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, who sits in the Cabinet of the United Kingdom. Northern Ireland is a distinct legal jurisdiction, separate from the two other jurisdictions in the United Kingdom. Northern Ireland law developed from Irish law that existed before the partition of Ireland in 1921. Northern Ireland is a common law jurisdiction and its common law is similar to that in England and Wales. However, there are important differences in law and procedure between Northern Ireland and England and Wales. The body of statute law affecting Northern Ireland reflects the history of Northern Ireland including Acts of the Parliament of the United Kingdom, the Northern Ireland Assembly, the former Parliament of Northern Ireland and the Parliament of Ireland, along with some Acts of the Parliament of England and of the Parliament of Great Britain that were extended to Ireland under Poyning's Law between 1494 and 1782. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.